saying that the video is starting, but yesterday it started kind of early. Now let's go live. Hey everybody, uh, today we'll be reading through Isaiah chapter 56. Sinful leaders condemned and blessings for all nations. All this and a bit more, my reactions to the chapter as we read through Isaiah chapter 56. Six. So I invite you to grab your Bibles, open up uh, BibleGateway.com, open up the Bible app. If you don't have a physical Bible, I got me some Bibles that I can hand out. Uh, so hit me up, and I'd love to try to hook you up with one. Um, and I do have my actual Bible, uh, unlike yesterday. Um, so, oh, I had to use my work Bible. Yeah, that's right. I have a work Bible. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple things in that, well, there's one thing in particular that was highlighted in blue that I missed yesterday because I didn't have my Jesus-centered Bible. So uh, before we jump into today's reading, I'm going to go back and read the section that foreshadows something about Jesus. So um, Isaiah 55 verse 1, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk it's all free this invitation to the thirsty is the same invitation jesus offers the crowd at the festival of shelters anyone who is thirsty may come to me anyone who believes in me may come and drink john 7 37 and 38 um yeah so that was uh pretty awesome and yesterday was uh, an invitation to the lord's salvation um where it was kind of like to me it reminded me a lot of uh the chapters and the verses in ezekiel i don't desire the wicked to be destroyed but to turn from their wickedness um and yesterday was that invitation for us to turn from our sin turn from our wickedness turn to god and he will forgive that's what yesterday was about uh 54 um, was about the promise of the future glory and like the hope that that God was going to bring to like the nations, uh, especially Jerusalem. And then before that, it was all foreshadowing of Jesus, which is a great verse, a uh, great chapter. But now we're in here to Isaiah 56, a blessing for all nations and sinful leaders are condemned. So uh, the last little bit, I've done like six minute intros and I thought I was running late on again, but I actually did this one pretty quick. So without further ado, let's jump into Isaiah 56. A blessing for all nations. This is what the Lord says. Be just and fair to all. Do what is right and good. For I am coming soon to rescue you and to display my righteousness among you. Blessed are those who are careful to do this. Blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest and keep themselves from doing wrong. And now from here to the end of the chapter, it's actually, or to verse 9, sorry, it's highlighted in blue. So verse 3. Don't let foreigners who commit themselves to the Lord say, The Lord will never let me be a part of his people. And don't let the eunuch say, I am dried up. I'm a dried up tree with no children and no future. Sorry. Um, yeah. uh, I'm, don't let them say, the eunuch say, I'm a dried up tree with no children and no future. For this is what the Lord says, I will bless those eunuchs who keep my Sabbath days holy and who choose to do what pleases me and commit themselves to me. I will give them within the walls of my house a memorial and a name far greater than the sons and daughters could give. For the name I give them is an everlasting one. It will never disappear. I will also bless the foreigners who commit themselves to the Lord, who serve him and love his name, who worship him and do not uh, desecrate the Sabbath day of rest, and who hold fast to my covenant. I will bring them 
to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. For the sovereign Lord who brings back the outcasts of Israel says, I will bring others too besides my people Israel. End of the blue highlight. Uh, sinful leaders condemned, verse 9. Come, wild animals of the field. Come, wild animals of the forest. Come and devour my people. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, are blind and arrogant. They are like silent watchdogs that give no warning when danger comes. They love to lie around sleeping and dreaming. Like greedy dogs, they are never satisfied. They are ignorant shepherds, all following their own path and intent on personal gain. Come, they say, let's get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Then tomorrow we'll do it again and have an even bigger party. Um, kind of stops there like the chapter does it's a weird break it kind of continues for the next two verses in 57 so I'm going to read the next two verses in 57 good people pass away the godly often die before their time but no one seems to care or wonder why no one seems to understand that God is protecting them from evil to come for those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Uh, the, the, the reading of Isaiah 56. Um, so there's a couple of really cool things in here uh, that I am excited to kind of give my reaction to. But that big old piece of verses 3 to 8, um, they read, actually it's 3 to 7. Uh, and then eight is its own thing. So uh, verses three to seven, the Lord promises that in the future, uh, sorry, in the future, the temple will be a house, house of prayer for Gentiles who commit themselves to him. Later, Jesus clears the temple of the money changers and quotes this passage when he declares, my temple will be called a house of prayer. Matthew 21, 12 to 13. Um, and with that too, uh, I, you know, if we go back to 55, it's all, it should all be free. So when Jesus clears this house, it's getting connected. And when he calls back to this verse, he's also connecting it with 55 where it's like, it's all supposed to be free yet you're doing this thing. You're causing this financial burden on top of whatever burdens it costs them to go on this pilgrimage to Jerusalem uh, and Jesus does not take kindly to it uh, but yeah so we have that foreshadowing then Isaiah uh, 56 verse 8 which is for the sovereign Lord who brings back the outcasts of Israel says I will bring others too besides my people Israel the sovereign Lord promises that he will bring back the outcasts of Israel and others too later Jesus says I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. John 10, 16. So we see some of that foreshadowing of what Jesus was talking about. And it's laid out here. And once again, in the book of Acts, they missed this. They missed this. They overlooked it. They were like, the Gentiles cannot join in with, um, uh, you know, the Israelites. This isn't right. Uh, and they would chase down uh, the apostles of Jesus, they would chase down his followers for claiming such things. And uh, a fair amount of acts is them having the discussions like, how do we let these Gentiles, these non-Jewish people in? Uh, how do we invite them in? Like what Jesus opened up the door for. But there's so many people that just missed this and they tried to kill, they ran, they chased out. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Like, that some people are just completely missing. Not all of Acts. I, I think I've said like they missed it in Acts. I'm making a reference to some of the people. And then others, especially the ones that followed Jesus, 
uh, we're like, okay, so then how do we actually invite these Gentiles in? Um, because Jesus laid it out and they started to get it. And then he laid it out in uh, verses like John ten sixteen. So one really, really cool. I really like that, you know, the Bible is opening up. It's not this narrow. It's only for this certain group of people. It's for everybody. And it's laid out super, super plainly, especially for the people that back then that would have read it. And the people that missed it wanted to miss it. Um, there is a certain amount of pride that would go along with this. And they were like, and rabbis were like celebrities. They like were smart. And we, we lifted up those, those people in that day and age. And, you know, there was status that came with being a good follower that became, that came with being a church leader that came with being a prophet, uh, this status and this power and this authority. So people, you know, lifted this stuff up and they were like, well, no, because if we start sharing it with others, then we're sharing our influence. We're sharing all of this stuff and, uh, it's going to dilute things and make it less powerful. And people would choose to ignore, uh, sections. Right. And we see that in today's day and age too. We see that today with a lot of people choosing to ignore, uh, chapters and books about caring for refugees and stuff. Um, that are in our holy scriptures. Um, with that too, a lot of that blue stuff is that invitation into heaven, this glimpse into this life after our life here and now. Um, and the promises of that joy that comes when we get to be in that extra, when we get to be in that life beyond the here and the now. And that that life after this life, the afterlife, the extension of our life in heaven in glory is opened up to others as well. It's opened up beyond uh, Israel to the Gentiles, which I think is really, really awesome. But with that, there's that promise for those who follow me, those who keep the Sabbath, right? That's the big thing here. The big laying out is that you just keep the Sabbath. You, you choose to rest and you dedicate that day to God. That is the, the big thing. And we're going to get into what like a Sabbath could look like in a, a chapter or two, um, because it's uh, also one of my favorite chapters. Um, so I know that that's coming. Um, so there's that. And then we get into these people that claim that have the power, that have the influence that are these religious leaders and God goes, you worry about all of this stuff. You worry about having a party. You worry about getting drunk. You worry about this. You see danger coming and you don't care because it doesn't affect you. You, you see this and you're willing to, you know, condemn the lives of others in order to make yourself, you know, to not hurt your bottom line. And God calls the wild animals out of the field and the forest to devour those people, and those leaders. Like, really, when you think about it, that sounds like a very painful and dangerous death. But there's a good chance at this time that people, that these leaders heard about these dangers and they were just like, whatever, send my people out to get hurt because they were only worried about themselves. Um, and, you know, it, it lays it out and like they're never satisfied. Um, I, they're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, so verse 11. Um, they're arrogant shepherds and following their own paths and intent on personal gain. So they're really just focused inward on themselves and they don't care about the people that they're leading. Um, so yeah, that is uh, kind of there. And God's like, yeah, wild animals. Let let nature, let, let, let um, these things just come and devour them. Let life devour them. Um, yesterday when the internet went down, uh, I don't know if this actually happened, but I know it happened when the stock market crashed. All these people that were out for personal gain that were had all of their, their faith in money, when money failed, 
they there's a lot of people that d decided that life wasn't worth living anymore. Yesterday, when in combination with what our 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 money is currently at, and then Rogers going down, people got scared, and some people probably thought that it was the end, which is absolutely sad. Um, I hadn't heard of anything drastic happening, but. Um, people were like, they wouldn't be shocked and sad, but when we put our faith into technology, when I, we put our faith into, um, you know, money, when we put our faith into really anything that isn't God, it will fall short and it will fail, but God will never fail. Um, yeah. And yeah finding good leaders ones that aren't just after that personal ambition and that personal gain it's tough there's a lot of charismatic entertaining leaders and voices and talking heads all over social media all over YouTube all over Facebook all over Instagram all over all of these things but are they more chasing that clout are they more chasing you know whatever and not just these big leaders, but all the small ones too. Because now we all feel like we're the main character in our own stories. Um, and there are times when I feel like that too, I will admit. There are times when I feel like I am the main character in the story. But then I have to humble myself and be like, I'm not the main character. Jesus is the main character. I sometimes I'm second but Jesus first God first um, so yeah um, on that note what are the big takeaways here one um, keep the Sabbath day honor that day of rest um, and tomorrow I'm going to be uh, speaking at my church I'm going to be uh, speaking on the Bible says what the dangers of learning about scripture from memes and other media. Um, so if you're interested in that, The Well uh, Church on Facebook, uh, it's on Highway 10 uh, in Ontario here. Um, so if you're interested in coming by, checking it out, invitation is there for you. But I'm gonna be taking Monday off and I'm gonna be trying to set that apart. And I'm probably gonna do that throughout the summer, which means I'm not gonna be doing these on Mondays. I want to keep it separate. Um, but yes, that's one of the things I'm doing. So uh, keep the Sabbath day. And there's this other beautiful part in here. Um, especially, you know, a couple days ago, yesterday, or two days ago, we talked about, you know, uh, Candace and I not being able to have children. Um, like the miscarriage that we had and everything and uh, this speaks right to that uh, it speaks to the foreigners and it speaks to the eunuchs like don't be sad because you don't have children because he is making a place for us in heaven and our names are going to be there and they're going to be etched and they're going to be names that last forever uh, which is awesome uh, so have our hope in God and in his promises I think is really really important uh, and it is challenging and to accept um, um, you know the the difficulties uh, that come with that and when they come to just trust that God has us and to trust his promises uh, to remember that uh, the foreigners the people like I'm not I don't have any like Jewish blood in me when I did my DNA test. Um, so, you know, I am grafted into this tree, in the, into the family of God. I am grafted in, which is pretty awesome. So that reminder that foreigners, people that we might not know, um, they are welcomed into God's family. They're welcomed into God's kingdom. You are welcome into God's kingdom. Um, and with that as well, um, 
I don't know why it's saying my video quality just stripped, but it did. So that promises of heaven and that reminder that to choose good leaders, for guidance on choosing good leaders, and bad leaders, we can trust that God's going to deal with them. Uh, so those are the takeaways for today. And on that note, let's pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you for welcoming the foreigners, for the eunuchs, those that struggle to have kids and have relationships that when we serve you, we are still committing to that higher purpose. That um, though we might struggle with this, that, and the other, that you are welcoming us in and you're welcoming us into heaven. Even with how offensive this would have been to so many of the Israelites, you are declaring that you are welcoming them and you are willing to risk your reputation for love and for us, for your creation, Lord. Our, your adoptive sons and daughters. We May we just have a firm foundation on your love for us, your promises to us, your promises of life in in paradise, in your house, in heaven. Help us to hold on to that promise, Lord. That this, everything around us is not it. And help us to not put our faith in things of this world, in money, in fame, in the internet, in this and that and the other, but help us to put our our faith in you, our hope in you, because you are worthy of it. You will not fail us. Even when you, we, you feel distant, even when our joy is zapped away, you are still there showing mercy. Your love will never fail. Your covenant will not be broken. And Lord, Help us to choose good leaders. Help us to have discernment in who we listen to. Guide us, Lord. Direct us, Lord. Use us to help lead others to follow good leaders. As we discover good leaders, help us follow well as we lead others. And Lord, especially uh, in this video format, for those that are following me, help them to follow me as I follow you, as I follow others, as I follow you. And Lord, help us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, Lord. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, so yeah, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again on Tuesday. Uh, and yeah, have a fantastic day. God bless.